Hello there. God love you all. Glad you're coming on. Bless your hearts. I'm going to wait till they all, everybody comes on. I have a lot to talk to you about today. I'm going to spend about, oh, 10, 15 minutes with you talking about how to win the lost. Hello there from Toronto, South Carolina, D.C. Uh, okay, Bristol, goodness, the U.K. God love you, Alabama, uh, Virginia Beach, goodness, Montreal, hello, Washington, hello, Texas, Florida, French, you're coming on so fast, I can hardly read everybody, wow, hello, yeah. Alabama again, Memphis, North Carolina, and uh, Holland, you are all a wonderful blessing, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God bless you. I want to talk to you like I told you yesterday today. I want to give you just some some uh, headlines on how to win the lost and how to approach your loved ones. And uh, I have, uh, I'm going to just wait just a few more moments till you know, everyone else comes on. Uh, again, hello, London. Yes, God is wonderful and faithful. To him be the praise. Well, let me just begin talking. Uh, let me just also let you know, tonight, I have class tonight, and I'm going to go on Periscope Live too, so you can you can watch and be a part of the wonderful evening we have here. Hello from France. Wow. Anyways, uh, that'll be about 7.30 p.m. California time. That's 10.30 p.m. In, uh, on the East Coast. And many of you, I'm sure, will watch that tomorrow uh, uh, in Europe and so forth. When we approach loved ones, first, I believe it's important that we pray first and ask the Lord to give us wisdom. Because the scripture says, he that winneth the lost is wise. We need wisdom because every person is different, you know. I have preached the gospel now. For goodness, over 41 years of my life, I began preaching when I was 21. And some of the things I'll share with you, I've had to learn on my own. Yes, I watched Catherine Kuhlman and others, of course, over the years. But the Holy Spirit is really our only teacher. And the one thing I've learned is, number one, you may want to write some of this down. You have to show that individual whether it's a loved one or a friend, that they are sinners and need salvation. Because often people, was, well, you know, I'm a good person, you know, and there's nothing wrong with me. I've heard that from my own cousins. There's nothing wrong with me. I don't need to be saved. I'm a good person. I, you know, I don't hurt nobody. And they say all that to you. Well, <clears throat> what you need to show them, first of all, is Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 20. From the Old and New Testament, they, they, they need to see both uh, the Old and the New to see that God's Word is very clear on the matter. And I'll just give you two scriptures now, and then later, what I like to do, by the way, I want to send you my notes. If you'll email me, let me give you my brand new email address, by the way, just for you. I think this will make you really happy, okay? Uh, Pastor Benny Hinn at BennyHinn.org. That's very simple. If you will email Pastor Benny Hinn at BennyHinn.org, that email will come straight to me. And if you'll, if you'll send me your email address on that email, I will send you my notes on how to win the lost and what questions to be prepared for because people will add, will come up with all kinds of things and i have a list of my goodness at least 20 25 things uh, maybe even more in my notes that people will say well i uh, you know my this or that and they'll come up with all kinds of reasons why they don't need to be saved you know so i'll give you every question they'll ask you and every answer to give them but you have to email me okay Email me your, your address so I can send my notes to you on email. Again, that's Benihan 
sorry, Pastor Benihin. You gotta write Pastor Benihin at Benihin.org. And that's my email address just for you on Periscope and you that are viewing this online. Now, let me just continue. Somebody said, yeah, okay, wonderful. Um, let me continue. You have to show them that they are sinful, that they are sinners. Because as long as they think they're okay, my uncle, I'll never forget my uncle, I witnessed my uncle, I said, oh, I've never done anything bad. I'm a good man. I don't, I don't hurt no, no, nobody. I said, uncle, you're a sinner like anyone else. But you have to show them what the Bible says. It's not enough to tell them, okay? You have to read them the Bible, read them the scripture. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 20, that says very clearly, not one is good in the sight of God. All have sinned, in other words. There's not one righteous, it says clearly, not one is righteous in the sight of God. Then show them Psalm 14. Read them the first few verses of the psalm. What it says, God looked down from heaven to see if any were righteous, and he found none. And God came to the conclusion, all have become filthy. None is good, no, not one. <laughs> And you have to tell them that. Say, listen, here's what the Bible says. The Bible says all have sinned and not one is righteous in the sight of God. So that's Ecclesiastes 7, verse 20, Psalm 14, the first few verses. Okay. Then you take them to Romans 3, verse 23, that says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Very clear. Very, very clear. So say, look, here, here in the Old and the New Testament we find... Clear scriptures that state all have sinned. There's not one person who's good in the sight of God. Therefore, you need salvation. And, you know, while you're talking to them, be in prayer that God will touch their heart with what you're saying because the word will not return void. Remember that. When you speak the word of God, that precious word will not return to them void, will not return to the Lord void. That word will accomplish what God has sent the word to do. Yes, thank you. Somebody says, uh, you can rewatch this, of course. Anyways, that's the first thing. Show them that they are sinners and that the Lord has declared them to be sinners. Ecclesiastes 7.20, Psalm 14, Romans 3.23. Then you take them to the second portion that God loves them. Make sure that you present that with cl uh, clarity and simplicity. Of course, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. But then explain that to them. And explain to them what it took for God to send his son. Take them to, uh, to Philippians chapter 2. Show them what it says that he had to that the Lord had to disrobe himself of the godly form and had to take upon himself the form of flesh. Billy Graham has an amazing... Uh, yeah, somebody's asking for my email. I'll do it one more time just before I say bye to you. Um, Billy Graham tells an amazing story, really a powerful uh, revelation, I believe, of what it means that God became a man, like, you know, to, to help us understand it. And Billy Graham tells this. He says, just imagine if you were a creator and you created a little, a little ant. I've told the story around the world because it's so powerful. He said, just imagine you were a creator and you created a little, little ant. And one day you're looking at your, at your creation and, and you're enjoying your creation and you see this little ant going towards danger. How would you tell that little ant not to go there? So Billy Graham asked, how would you tell that little creature, little tiny thing, not to go towards danger? Well, first, it cannot see you. To the little ant, you, you look like a cloud. It cannot hear you. It doesn't have your form of communication. If you touch it, you'll kill it. If you try to put your hand across to stop it from going into danger, it'll climb over your hand and keep going. He said, there's only one way. You must become an ant like it. Imagine that. That's what God did. God became a man. The distance between God and man is a lot farther 
than the distance between me and the ant. Think about that. For God to become a man, that's a massive miracle. That's why he said, for God so loved the world. It was a massive step for God to disrobe himself, as Philippians 2 says, from the godly form and took upon himself the form of flesh just for you and I. And the, and the, and the word of God says, and please tell that loved one of yours, say, look, he did not take the form of an angel, which would have been a whole lot you know, simpler, really. God took upon himself the form of men, humbled himself to become a man, and showed him what it says that in, in Philippians, beginning at verse 5. And then explained to them the, the love of God very clearly, showed them scriptures from the New Testament, where the Lord said in Matthew 11, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. I'll never forget, I was one time in Mauritius, and happened to ask one gentleman who was a Hindu, I said, have any of your gods ever showed you they love you? Nope. Have any of them showed that they care for you? Nope. I said, have any of your 300 million gods, is what he said he worshipped, I said, have any of those millions of gods ever said these words? Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. He said, not one. I said, let me tell you about Jesus. And I shared with him what the Lord said. I said, the only man who ever said these words is the Son of God. I said, no God ever said that. No philosopher ever said that. Nobody on this earth ever said that. Only Jesus Christ said that. God in the flesh said that. His name is Jesus. That man got saved that day simply because he said, wow, that Jesus would say those words. I said, yes, he did. I said, only one man said, come unto me, all you who labor, and I'll give you rest. The Holy Spirit used that to win that soul. So show them, the, show them his love. Ask the question. Say, does so-and-so love you like, like that? You know, anyone who loves you enough to die for you? Has anyone, any God, disrobed himself to become flesh? Just for us? Just for you and me? That's his love. Or, or ask them this, say, um, do you love your children? Yeah. Well, have you ever counted their hair? <laughs> what can they say? But God loves us so much, he has counted our very hair. Wow. I was telling a lady a few days ago. I said, you know, lady, I said, I don't know if God counts the hair on a wig. But I, I said, I bet you he loves you so much, he has counted the hair on your wig. Of course, you know. Uh, she was she was quite you know blessed. Somebody asked me where's where's my wife? My wife is in Florida, in Orlando. Uh, we she is she she was at a funeral service a few days ago, and her mom of course is in Orlando, and she's taking care of her mom. I'll be with her this week, so I'll give her your love. Yeah, you'll see her next week. I promise you. You know Suzanne is a good good daughter, and her mom has dementia. And she has to be taken care of, you know. She she she's eighty four years old. Anyways, let, let me just continue because we we're talking about. I just somebody asked me, "Where's your wife?" Just in case they, you know, they want to know. I let them know. Okay, what? And by the way, Sue and I are very happy. Thank you for praying for us. The Lord has restored our marriage, and to Him be all the praise. Well, back to what I was saying about how to win loved ones. Make sure show them that they're sinners. Ecclesiastes 7.20, Romans 3.23, Psalm 14. Show them the love of God. John 3.16, Philippians chapter 2, Matthew 11, and so on, which I just shared with you. Now, yeah, someone says, and he puts our tears in a bottle. Of course, you can show them all those scriptures. Uh, be wonderful. Someone said, can you do a broadcast with your wife? Of course, I will. I told you next week when I'm in Florida with her. Uh, just quickly, let's just continue now, because I know you sweet people are all listening, and but some are still asking questions about this and that. Number three, once you show them that they're sinners, secondly, you show them the love of God. Thirdly, you must show them that he took their sins and give them there the scriptures very clearly. Second Corinthians 5.21 
he who knew no sin took upon himself our sin that we might be his righteousness and make sure very clearly to show and explain to them what that means that Jesus knew no sin the only perfect man who ever lived on this earth is Jesus the Son of God lived a sinless holy life and became our substitute take them to Romans 3 verse 24 23 right through 25 where it talks about he being our substitute called propitiation that Jesus Christ the Holy Lamb of God took upon himself our sin again 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 show them that show them Romans 3 verse 24 25 or you can start with verse 23 there then of course very clearly show them Ephesians chapter 2 where the scripture says very clearly while we were yet sinners Christ died for us and it's all there in the first portion of you know Ephesians 2 and once you show them that then you have to show them uh, the gospel of John chapter 1 verse 12 as many as received him that we have to receive him nobody can be, be saved by just saying well I believe it well so so does the devil believe it that Jesus died I mean but you have to accept it you have to receive it uh, in 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 act 16 remember when the jailer said what must I do to be saved and Paul said believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved well you know believe on the Lord Jesus doesn't mean mentally accept the fact that he he that he died for you because even the devils believe that you have to trust him and the word believe means trust believe on the Lord Jesus in that portion means trust him you have to trust him with your soul trust him with your eternity trust him for salvation that's what it, it means when it says believe on the Lord Jesus and then John 1 verse 12 is very clear as many as received him to them gave you power to become the sons of God even to them who believe on his name meaning that you have to believe that the name of Jesus is the name that saves that you come to the Lord there's no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved and the Lord said clearly in John I am the way I'm the truth I'm the life no man come to the to the Father but by me you can look up all those scriptures and and show it to them. now here's what I'm going to do for you and by 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 the way what I gave you are just the headlines and I'm hoping you all took notes what I like to do for you though I want to send you uh, all, all that on email I want to send you the headlines on email on how to witness how to win the lost what scriptures to use and then I want to also give you what questions to be prepared for because you know people are going to come up with all kinds of things like well I'm a good person that's what my uncle told me I'm a good person I don't need God I don't need to be saved I never hurt anybody you know all that stuff and and there's where you show them what the Bible says clearly oh somebody said I pray you know I go to church I've, I've heard that a million times I'm going to show you what to answer people like that I have like oh my goodness I'll give you examples of many questions people will come up with excuses really in, in many cases of why they don't they don't need the Lord and you need to answer them with wisdom that's why it says he that wins souls is wise you you've got to have wisdom to win the loss okay my email how to do it you you get my email let me just give it to you okay Pastor Benny Hinn at BennyHinn.org. Simple. I'm sure you know how to spell, how to write my name, B-E-N-N-Y-H-I-N-N. -N -N. So simple. Pastor Benny Hinn at BennyHinn.org. That email is working now. 
You don't even have to wait till tomorrow, okay? You can send me uh, your email and then I'll send you back the headlines of how to approach sinners, how to approach loved ones, and then what questions to be prepared for because they're going to come up with all kinds of reasons why they, they don't need God. And so I will give you, well, thank you back. God love you. I will, uh, you know, give you all the answers to give them on, you know, what to say. Well, bless you all. Thank you for being my wonderful partners, my wonderful friends. I hope you learned something today. And uh, tell people I'm on Periscope. Make sure they're watching me, okay? And uh, send me again uh, an, an email to Pastor Benihin at Benihin.org. And I will gladly send you back my notes. You know, it took me hours of study, by the way. I'm going to send you my notes on how to win the lost. So let's do it today. God bless you. And by the way, uh, please make sure to tell uh, everyone you know that I'm on Daystar uh, every day at 9 a.m. Central. Please help me by spreading the word about Periscope because I'll be doing more of this with you on Periscope. I want to deal with uh, spiritual warfare this coming week. Someone was, was asking. And by the way, now that you have my, my email address, uh, make sure to let me know on email what is it you want me to talk to you about. Just let me know. What is it you want to hear more about? Uh, send me prayer requests, and I'll pray for that. Most certainly pray for your loved ones and so forth. And I'll respond too, by the way. So when you send me an email, I'll send you back a response. So just not, it's not going to be one way, okay? Uh, but let me know what, what is it you want to hear me talk about. Um, send me prayer requests. Send me things you want to know. Uh, you may even have some Bible questions, and God willing, I'll do as much as I can, I promise you. Uh, my mornings, most times when I'm home, you know, I'm I'm on the phone with the office, and of course I spend time with, with the Lord. If I'm traveling, I, I'll, I'll do my best when I'm on the road. It's a little tougher on the road, okay? But I'll do my best. And I will make sure you get a lot of answers. I have a wonderful man named Larry Mariello, Pastor Larry Mariello. And I'll have him help me a little bit in case I get a lot of people wanting to know all kinds of things uh, about this and that. So I can tell Larry what, 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 what to say. You know, Moses had a very uh, uh, good piece of counsel from Jethro. He says, look, if you can't do it all, do all you can and let other people who are, who are anointed help you. So I promise you this, I will deal with the headlines. I will deal with what you need to know. Uh, there's a lot of things, of course, people may want to know that I can answer with one, you know, I can give you one answer and it'll deal with a whole lot of things, you know. But if there's certain specifics, then I will make sure Larry or uh, some of my wonderful staff, who are very capable, by the way, very anointed people, uh, can, can help also. But be encouraged. All is well. Jesus is on the throne. And God bless you. Goodbye. Have a wonderful, wonderful day today. And uh, tonight, service is at 7, 30, actually 7, but we will go live at 7.30. God love you. As they say in Israel, Shalom. God bless you all. Bye-bye.